Dale Jr. made a massive mistake passing on some NASCAR Cup Series charters, plus Colleg Racing announces who's replacing Matt Benedetto in that 16 Cup car. It's no secret that Dale Earnhardt Jr. wants to take Junior Motorsports JRM to the NASCAR Cup Series. The problem is that barrier of entry right now to get a charter is really, really high. So when Dale Jr. was on his podcast this week talking to Ray Everham, he mentioned that he had the opportunity to purchase the charters from BK Racing back in the day for $2 million. For the sake of comparison, the worst charter in the sport last year from Live Fast Motorsports sold for $40 million. That's $38 million more for all of you math whizzes out there. This man has to absolutely regret not pouncing on those BK charters like somebody that scheduled a cruise, went on it, got home, and we're like, we're never doing that again. So he has to have some sort of instant regret. And I feel bad for the guy because he wants to be in the Cup Series. But at the time, and keep in mind, this was either in 2016 when BK sold off one of their charters to Front Row or in 2018 when they filed for bankruptcy. Not really sure on what the timeline is from Dale's side, but that's just sort of when BK's charters you know, exited their hands before Ron Devine got indicted on federal charges. Not ideal. Regardless, maybe at the time, JRM just wasn't ready to move up to the Cup Series yet, right? Going to the Cup Series is a massive task. Like it's a monumental undertaking, and it's not for everybody. So at the time, it maybe just didn't make business sense. However, looking back on it, I'm sure they wish they probably would have bought those charters. They could have sat on them, leased them out for a year, figured some things out, and then even kind of just ran at the back or mid-pack before trying to really ramp up what they wanted to do in the Cup Series. Hindsight's 2020, of course, who knew that charters would be worth $40 million. If Dale wants to buy two charters now, it's going to set him back minimum $80 million, and this guy's not putting out $80 million. So in the grand scheme of things, is he that upset? Probably not. He doesn't seem like a guy that gets upset about much other than like if somebody parks in the spot for the Instacart, uh, like he mentioned on his podcast this week. Other than that, you know, what Dale and Kelly Earnhardt have built at JRM is really, really impressive, right? And having an Xfinity powerhouse team is certainly nothing to be ashamed of, right? They played a massive role in getting a number of guys to the Cup Series, and they take a lot of pride in that, which they absolutely should. Dale said, and he said this multiple times, that one of his biggest wishes and something that he really wants to do in the sport, at least as a car owner, is have a car in the Daytona 500. He wants to see one of his cars race in the Daytona 500. And of course, that is possible without having a charter. They can enter as an open car and qualify either on speed or through the duels on Thursday. And maybe we see that happen sometime in the future. However, having a JRM car full-time in the Cup Series just doesn't seem like it's going to be in the cards, unless, of course, JRM can work out some sort of equity deal with an existing team that doesn't see them having to put up $80 million, $40 million you know, at the beginning to acquire one of those charters. And that's before they even buy the equipment for the Gen 7 Cup car. And, of course, they could work out some sort of deal with Hendrick Motorsports or whoever. But for now... It just doesn't seem like financially that's going to happen on their end, and it shouldn't. Their business model works really well in the Xfinity Series. I don't know if their business model can work as successfully in the Cup Series. We've seen a couple of teams attempt to do that, and it doesn't ever really seem to work necessarily. There are certainly some pay drivers in big... <clears throat> in big time NASCAR Cup Series teams that win races, but it's not sort of the same model as JRM. So ultimately, we'll have to wait and see what they're going to do there, but you have to think this guy definitely regrets not purchasing those charters when he could have. Moving on to another team that recently purchased two charters to go cup racing, that's Cog Racing. And they seem to be in a little bit of a, we're gonna figure this out type of life. They're giving it the old college try. And if you try to use any sort of like AI, uh, caption generator. They always seem to correct colleague to college, and it's very frustrating. But Colleg Racing previously did sign Matt Benedetto this offseason to drive in that in the Cup Series, that number 16 car vacated by AJ Allmendinger, who went down the Xfinity Series this year. Matt Benedetto was scheduled to be in that car. That was until, of course, his funding fell through, and he famously put out that tweet with the pen emoji that he had signed something and then had to sit in his car and make a selfie video being like, listen, the funding fell through, that deal's done, and ultimately it was Colleg where he was going to end up at. So they need to find somebody to fill those vacated seats now, uh, races rather, in that 16 car. So the team has pivoted to Derek Krause, who previously made select starts for Colleg last year in the Xfinity series. He made eight starts, got three top 10 finishes for the team and looked pretty okay. He also practiced and qualified Allmendinger's car at Richmond in the fall when 
Allmendinger was back um, racing at Road America in the Xfinity Series, even though he wasn't full-time in the series. That's neither here nor there. So you have Derek at least has some sort of experience there. He also does a lot of sim work for Colleg on the Cup side as well. So he's pretty well-rounded. So he'll make his NASCAR Cup Series debut next weekend at Las Vegas. And then he'll run Phoenix after that, as well as both Darlington, Gateway, Phoenix Fall, and I think a Kansas is probably mixed in there as well. So the guy is going to get a little bit of everything outside of super speedways, and Krause is a decent driver. He raced for three years for Bill McAnally in the Truck Series, and honestly, if you wanted him to hit something in the Truck Series, he was going to do it. He was phenomenal at it. The team then replaced him with Christian Eckes, who went on to win, where Krause couldn't, and Krause kind of fluttered around, but landed on his feet in those select starts last year for Colgan in the Xfinity Series, and really kind of seemed to find his stride. Didn't run into anything, which was a big step in the right direction there. So Derek Krause will be driving that 16 car in select races uh, this season in the Cup Series. He'll probably, he's also making select starts in the Xfinity Series as well for colleagues. So he's kind of piecemealing together a schedule. We'll see what his future holds for him. Josh Williams, who joined Cog Racing this offseason as well, famously parked on the front stretch at Atlanta last year. We're at Atlanta again this year. Don't think that's going to happen again. But it did kind of help parlay him into a ride at Cog this year, a step up from his DGM Racing uh, team that he was with in 2023. Josh Williams will also be making select starts in that number 16 cup car for Cog this year. Pretty excited to see what he can do as well. Um... We know the cog equipment is kind of mid-tier at this point, but it's interesting to see some of these different drivers be able to get in there and get some reps and see how all of that's going to play out. So let me know in the comments what you think about Dale Jr. passing on those BK charters, Derek Krause signing with Cog and essentially replacing Matt DiBenedetto. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.